Podcast Markets with Chip Nellinger. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Tractor Zoom Delivering Insights. If you're interested in tracking what's going on in the auction marketplace, something I use every day when we're looking at, at, at values of equipment and, and uh, developing trend lines, check out Iron Comps by Tractor Zoom. It's a great place to get all the information you need for uh, forecasting what's going to happen in the auction market. At uh, checkout, use Moving Iron to get yourself a nice little discount there. So, this edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. Is always so grateful to have uh, Chip Nellinger from Blue Reef Agri Marketing on to come talk about what's going on in the marketplace. And you know, Chip, there's not a not a lack of things to talk about today. How you been, man? <laughs> been been well, Casey. Yeah, yeah, we take a couple weeks off for the holidays, thinking it's going to be nice and quiet. And uh, wow, were we wrong? Nothing, huh? <laughs> nothing of the sort, right? <laughs> exactly right. As you, uh, so we had you know, obviously had a pretty uh, eventful week here. We had the uh, the situation that popped off in. Uh, in, in Washington DC. And, um, you know, it's, it's a sad thing. You know, I don't, I, I, you know, talked about it on earlier podcasts about, you know, what we had, uh, what we saw there. And, and this, uh, 2020 was, a was a flock of black swans come into play. And then 2021 there, the black swans are still kind of hanging around. So, but there's no real effect that we see on the market from, from that, uh, from those incidents we saw earlier this week. No, it, surprisingly, uh, right? And yeah. so um, that's, you know, I think a uh, a good for, for us in the marketplace to watch it every day. Uh, it's it's very easy to get caught up in, you know, it's raining, it's not raining, it's, there's a protest, and it's going to have X effect on the market. And, you know, we started getting those calls, too, uh, that, that afternoon, like, ah, oh, there's you know, they've taken over the Capitol building. Is the grain market going to crash? And, you know, the stock index futures were still open at that point in time, and they were just sitting there doing nothing. You know, I mean, uh, you would have thought that, uh, and then the next day they just go screaming, you know, straight up higher. And so follow the market, right? That's the, that's the lesson in all this. Follow the market. And uh, right now the stock market's path of least resistance uh, is higher, and I think you can say the same for the grain markets. Uh, I think that's a good analogy. Uh, a flock of black swans, and that's really what uh, we've seen in the in the grain market, right? I yep. mean, starting in September, uh, even before that. I, I think you can take that even before that. The the whole, um, you know, going on uh, a year ago now, the, the the COVID shutdowns and and the massive break we saw in commodities. You know what? In hindsight likely what that did is is pull prices artificially low in some commodities re-stimulate uh, demand which had already been started to be primed up <clears throat> then you flat fast forward to september um you know we we find out <clears throat> excuse me on the quarterly stocks report that uh you know by golly 18 months ago we did have more prevent plant than uh, uh you know what the government was saying and uh oh at the same time we're uh couple bushels below what people thought on uh, corn yields and boom there goes uh, 700 million bushels out of the right. balance sheet in corn at the same time south america is well into a drought and uh, china's buying everything you know left and right anything they get their hands on they're buying and uh, that's the perfect storm and 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 here we are um, yep. you know knock on the door 14 dollar beans and had a, a brief little push above five dollars. Uh, in fact, overnight here, uh, you know, five oh one's been the high in the May corn. So, you know, we've breached the five dollar level a, a couple of times. Not closed over there yet. There's no one. I, I don't care. Uh, I'll go on record here. There's no one that um, you know would have predicted this um, four months ago, five months ago. Uh, no one. Uh, and corn, that's why. Not when corn yeah, was three why, bucks, you know. <laughs> no one was going. Yeah, that, no one was and that's saying why that. the markets do this. That's yep. that's why you see moves like this. Um, it goes without the majority, right? Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately, that's the the function uh, of any market. And now it's a case of how high do we have to go, and for how long do we have to stay there to ration the demand that we need. 
<clears throat> and we don't know that's a moving target until we know what the size of the South American crop is and how much they're going to have to export on corn and beans. Uh, what's their second crop of corn going to be in Brazil? They haven't even planted that yet. So there's a lot of those questions ahead of us. And so this thing, um, you know, has been straight up. And, and the thing I would warn against is uh, good exercise. If you have a charting package or, you know, go to the Internet, um, uh, Google, you know, commodity charts, there's some free um, CME website has that. Yeah. There's, there's free places to go. Look at a, a continuation chart. Uh, on beans, <clears throat> go back every time we've been uh, north of, of twelve dollars, and, and look what's happened. Uh, it's only been four or five times that that's happened, and every time that it's happened, you have volatility. Now, people would say something like yesterday is volatility, right? Or what right. we've seen so far, where yeah. you have a fifty cent swing in beans, low to high, fifty cent range in the day. That's not volatility. I'm talking volatility like, you know, we're sitting here at thirteen seventy. In uh, three weeks uh, down the road, you're at uh, 1180, and then six weeks later, you're at 1540. That has been very common every other time we've been up these levels. We haven't seen it yet. It's been straight up. You look at a chart, you're like, "Wow, you, this is great." It goes up every day. You know, love the markets. <laughs> it, it, it lulls yeah. you into a false sense of security. Right. <clears throat> and, and I'm telling you, it, it, sooner rather than later. We are going to uh, be out of the "quote unquote" easy money, right? The, the, it's easy; it goes up every day, right? Corn's been up, I don't know, eighteen of the last twenty trading sessions, or seventeen in the last twenty. We've been higher in corn. That's that's typical, but the next phase of that always happens, and that's you get some massive volatility, and it won't be straight back down. Likely, it's not going to go from five dollar corn back to three dollar corn. Um, we're going to stay at a level long enough to ration demand, and that just gets very, very turbulent, I guess is the word, the best word to use. Yeah. Yeah, there's a – these are just kind of deals where, like you and I were talking about before we got started, you know, there's, there were plenty of guys that were delivering $9 beans when they were, you know, 10 12 bucks, you know, 13, 13, 11 bucks, you know, and now we're, uh, we're kind of running that same thing again. And as you take a look at the corn market – the the March contract is almost five bucks, right? It might might be five bucks now. I haven't seen my quote for the morning, but it's right on. It's it's knocking on the door at five dollars. Okay, yeah. so you got five dollars there. You get the December. Um, it's where? What's it at? Like four forty five? Trading about four forty right? Four forty. Okay, so so you got this big swing. Um, I haven't been tracking and following the grain markets for you know as long as as anybody else that listens to this podcast has, but um. It seems to me like there is a, a significant shortage um, or, or something. I mean, I guess that's what that is, why it's so inverted. I mean, here you got March corn that typically there's not a lot of guys delivering March corn as there would be December corn. So it tells me that there's a lot a lot of demand out there leading into this WASDE report coming up next week. I mean, how much do you think that's going to shake up what we see, this this inversion that we see already? How much do you think next week is going to shake that up? Yeah, I think um, a, a couple things there. That That is absolutely what the market's saying, whether that would be supply being a little bit less than expected or the demand overwhelming that supply, you know, some combination of that balance. Uh, that's the market telling you, we want your corn and beans right now. We don't want you to store it until spring or summer. Um, futures are higher now than they are Two months from now, basis is better now than it is two months from now. We want your grain right now. We don't want you to store it. <clears throat> um, this report is obviously always a, a big, big report in January, whether corn's $3 or $5 or anywhere in between. January report's always big because we get the final yield. We get any final little acreage tweaks um, that there might be out there. We get um, a, a stocks report. We get ending stocks. We get world numbers. We get wheat acreage. There's a tremendous amount of information on this. Uh, I'm a little concerned that we've run so far so fast to the upside that this has all been built in, right? The, the market, uh, I think, expects um, cuts in, in carryout. They know demand is likely running stronger than what the USDA has plugged in. 
They know the South American crop is lower than what the USDA's most recent forecast is. So this, this, I don't know, unless it's something wildly, wildly bullish, way beyond the, uh, you know, the expectations and, and the pre-report estimates. I don't know that this is going to have uh, that big of an influence. It's almost like, you know, the barn door's been broken open and the, and the horses are, you know, out of the barn running. Uh, we can't catch them now. So <clears throat> I could always be proven wrong on that, but, but I'm fearful a little bit of uh, the market being disappointed by this report because it's gone so far so fast. Mm-hmm. And even if it's a little on the friendly side, have we already traded that? Is the market already looking way past that? Right. And uh, we'll, we'll see. It just sets the stage for, you know, maybe the, the spark of, of this volatility that we're, we're talking about here. These, these funds are getting uh, awful long, up near a record long position in corn, uh, probably just af- off of that on, on beans. And so it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a wild winter. Um, I'm afraid, and, yeah. and even into spring and summer, this thing is has gotten way more dynamic, and it's hard to wrap your your head around that, right? You, you mentioned that where you know there's, um, I think one thing we need to be cautious on is farmers feel uh, in general. I'm speaking in generalities right now. I mean, not everyone. Um, farmers generally sold corn and beans too early, right? And 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 that's always. That's not a bad thing necessarily. I mean, that's uh, 19 years out of 20 to have a plan and and forward contract and and look at your margins and sell profitable levels. That works. That keeps you in business. Keeps you making money. Uh, in a in a market like this, it happens one every 10 or or, or 15 years. Um, you you feel it makes you feel stupid, right? Because well, my 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 dummy neighbor, he he never has a plan. He's always selling at the lows. He hit the lottery this year. If you didn't have a plan and you didn't sell anything and you have your whole crop, you've hit the lottery right now as right. long as you sell. But right. unfortunately, all those people ride it all the way up and ride it all the way back down yep. and still end up selling near the bottom. But human nature tells us, well, well, well look at this December corn at 440 and November beans are, uh, you know, uh, 1180 or, or uh, you know, knock on the door 12 bucks. I, I got to sell this. I, we haven't had. But the, the dynamics have changed, and um, my point with that is there, there's a lot of tools out there, different cash contracts, different option strategies, um, to where you can have your cake and eat it too. Because 440 corn looks good right now, but I can tell you, if China keeps buying, if the South American, uh, the Brazilian second crop of corn has a, a problem with production, if we have a weather problem this summer, um, you're going to sell 440 corn, and you're going to hate it when when new crop corn's five forty or six dollars, because that's what will happen. And um, I'm not saying don't sell it. I'm just saying, what's your plan? Because right. hey, you don't even know cro- you don't even know crop insurance guarantees yet, right? That's right. that's comes in February. Uh, again, don't read me to say don't don't sell this. I'm just saying it's more critical than ever to to have a plan and and you know look at all the tools that are available out there. And um, sometimes it's not immediately right. You can't. Have your cake and eat it too in one snap of the finger, one maneuver. Sometimes that takes some thought, and you know, okay, what's my step two and three and four as this market plays out over the next several months? And uh, it's it's difficult. It's really difficult uh, in this environment. And uh, and then back to the volatility, right? It, it makes everyone, no matter what, no matter what, if you have if you bought calls a long time ago. And you, you're saying to yourself, man, I got the tiger by the tail, man. I got a bunch of money made in calls. Or, wow, look at all this grain I have sold. I'm a genius. When this volatility comes and corn breaks 60 cents in three days and beans break a dollar, uh, you don't feel so good then. And it starts working on you. You're like, oh, I screwed up. Well, I should have got out. I should have done this. The hindsight game. And uh, and that causes bad decisions. And it, it, no matter what your position is in the market, it makes it's this thing is going to make you feel stupid for lack of a better term. It's going to make you regret past decisions um, if you don't already, no matter what you do. And I think the important thing, a real powerful thing, is to understand that, right? That yep. you're never going to feel just great about this thing, but you got to focus on your bottom line. Are you making money? 
if you are making money and you can open the top side back up, let's think about doing that. So I don't know if any of that makes sense, Casey. I feel like I just rambled on uh, on my high horse, but this thing is going to get really difficult um, going forward. No, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're, uh, there's always there's swings up and down both whenever there's anything going on, right? I mean, so this is, uh, this is going to be an interesting time to watch. All right, so let's talk about this drought situation that we see. Um, so there's a lot of drought in um, concerns in Argentina. World weather um, agencies are starting to talk about some some very decent rains that are supposed to come to Argentina uh, Sunday through Tuesday. Uh, the Black Sea region has supposed to get uh, some pretty decent rains and snows through um through the through this next week you look at the drought map in the u.s and what's going on there um if it, it's starting to really intensify what what that looks like so as you look at the trade and i know it's still early march is a long ways away um but as you start taking a look at at the situation we're in right now what's your thoughts on how the market is looking at this drought situation not just in the black sea region south america but also here in the u.s yeah, I, I, that's a very dynamic, um, dynamic thing as well. Um, and, and so let's start with South America. There, there's a lot of that in the market already, right? And USDA A is historically very slow to lower yields in South America. Uh, they're the last, the last to do it, right? right. So the market's going to rely on other private estimates in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's not an all-encompassing drought. It, it's not like it was here in 2012 where, it, I mean, it was it encompassed 80% of the main growing areas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are important growing areas that it's covering in Brazil, but there are other areas that have gotten some rain and uh, look to produce really good crops. So their, their yield is going to be lower. It's just how much lower. <clears throat> and that's a moving target, and nobody knows that, right? Because... Unlike here, we, we, we cuss the USDA, and, and I hate the crop condition reports during the growing season, uh, but you can get to our fields. There's eyes on those fields. Um, and I've not been to Brazil, but I know people that have been there. I've talked to people that farm there. Um, you don't have the same thing. It's, a little, it's way more remote. It's, it's just really kind of a black hole, right? You can drive. You know, I've been told, hey, I have a field over here. There's no road to it. i got to drive through bean fields for 30 miles to get to this field to spray or harvest well there's no one checking that field on a weekly basis like they do here right and so uh, that's a black hole and it could it, my point is with that is we can have we can be really surprised both ways we could get to this and say man it was so dry but how did they come up with that big of a crop or we could say wow uh that really that's way under what we thought uh, so there's still that's going to add to the volatility and, and that's the market kind of searching for a level that, all right, we know it's dry. We're watching the forecast. It's not raining. And you never know that until after the fact. You never know how high did we go. Are we high enough to ration demand? You don't know that immediately. You know that well after the fact. You don't know are we high enough to digest these these losses in, in uh, South America because of the drought. Uh, that's after the fact you know that. But I'd say we're getting closer and closer to that. Um, Still, the the story is to be told, right? I mean, Argentina is very, very dry, but you mentioned they're supposed to get some uh, some better rains. It's not been totally dry. It's not been like it, it just had. They've been getting little spits of four tenths here, six tenths there. Uh, you know, an inch if you're lucky in some areas. It's not a hundred percent dry, and there's some more of those pop up rains on tap for them. And and we know uh, here, if you just even in a below average precip year. Uh, you get the right spoon feed this crop a little bit and and you can raise better yields than what you think maybe not record maybe not even average uh, so that all that is yet to be seen and, and weather's going to be a big part of that our drought map is getting a lot of um, uh, of notice as well uh, compare it to a year ago and uh, or should I should say uh, to a year ago for sure but to 2012 at this point in time and it's way worse on the drought map particularly out your way it, you know, across the plains, the southwest, uh, you know, and the and the Rocky Mountain area, and that's even pushed over into you know the eastern Corn Belt with uh, some below average 
uh, dryness showing up on the, on the long-term drought map. That is something that's really going to be watched closely, and I think partially already starting to affect the market as well. You throw in there the Black Sea region, it's such a world marketplace anymore um, that uh, every area counts, right? Uh, both positive and negative, and, and, and that's, uh, if you ever get everything going the right way, that's why we can really feel like we're, you know, just swimming in grain, uh, because all areas of the, of the world are, are growing these crops and they're doing better jobs. But right now we're in the cycle of everyone's having a couple little crop problems and, you know, it, it, it I guess, exaggerates the shortage when you have it and, and increases demand. So this thing uh, is, is going to be really volatile and weather is a huge part of that, obviously, and will be going forward. And there's, again, you know, just going to increase and add to the potential volatility that we're going to see here over the next uh, six or nine months, I'm afraid. Yep. Yep, good points. So, well, just like you talked about earlier, Chip, there is uh, an absolute, especially right now, an absolute need to have that plan if folks are working on one or just need some help getting pointed in the right direction. What's the best, what's the best way to do that, Chip? Yeah, the best way, uh, just give us a call, 309-550-7213. That's our office number. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. Um, you know, we're we're low pressure, but, but we're pretty uh, adamant that you, you need to have a plan. And that plan, um, you know, in a market like this is is, is different and, and people need help. So we're more than willing to, you know, uh, just kind of see where you're at, uh, get, get to an overview of, of what your plan is, give you some thoughts on what you might want to think about doing here over the next six or nine months. And and uh, we'd love to love to uh, have that conversation with you. Right on. Well, I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Make sure you check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is where you're going to find the latest editions of the Moving Iron Podcast when they come out. Also, check out MovingIronLLC.com. That's where you're going to find the you know, the podcasts as they get posted, any blogs I've got out there, and uh, information about the Moving Iron Summit that has been postponed from the January January dates to September 15th through 17th in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, looking forward to that. Got a great, great agenda set up uh, with a lot of different good speakers and stuff lined out there as well. So make sure you check that out. Also check out um, all the folks over there at the Dryland Farmer Podcast and and uh, Brent and Lane and what they got going on over there. So um, one last thing, throw one last plug out there for the Tractor Zoom. God, I can't, I can't. Uh, tell you how how much i use this and how much i like having it around this the with the iron comps going in and be able to check what's going on in the uh in the auction market so with that uh I decided to go down that path and get that information i'll use moving iron at checkout and you'll get a you get a nice little discount so with that i'm casey seymour chip Donger. let's come be some iron folks out moving iron in the 21st century Hard-working people working hard for you and me Moving higher time and time again Through the years you'll find us here Moving higher